Subaru first introduced the Crosstrek XV hybrid at the 2013 New York Auto Show, but it was discontinued just two years later. It had all the typical Subaru attributes of all-wheel drive, utility and safety, but it never caught on. Why didn't the hybrid make it in the current Subaru lineup? The majority of Subaru's vehicles have been fuel-efficient, economical to operate, and appeal to an economy-minded customer. When the Crosstrek Hybrid arrived in 2013, it offered new features for the chassis, exterior and hybrid system to enhance driving dynamics and ride quality. The configuration of the hybrid system and battery along with the low center of gravity and superior weight balance delivered the same sporty drivability and handling both on and off-road. So why didn't it sell? The main reason the Subaru X the Crosstrek Hybrid was slow sales. Consumers weren't willing to pay an extra $4,800 premium for the 3 MPG increase in fuel mileage over the standard Crosstrek. The Crosstrek Hybrid had the highest starting MSRP in Subaru's lineup, even more than the flagship Outback and popular Forester SUV. The hybrid's improved mileage wasn't enough to move the new green crossover off dealer lots. What's next for Subaru Green Technology? Subaru hasn't given up on hybrid technology and the Japanese automaker will be brining out new green offerings soon. Subaru moved to the new global platform with a new Impreza and 2018 Crosstrek first, and it will be offered on all next-generation models to come. The new architecture will allow them to build dedicated EV-type models that better fit into their plans and manufacturing capability. Subaru Corporation has confirmed they will be bringing out a new plug-in hybrid, PHEV, for consumers in the near future in the dedicated battery electric vehicle, BEV, in 2021. What they haven't said is what existing model will get the new green technology. We are guessing it will be the cross-strike first with others to follow. We do know Subaru won't build a new vehicle for the either PHEV or BEV. It will come on an existing model in the lineup. Subaru is not your typical automaker and they will make sure whatever new green technology is coming, it will provide their customers and other EV owners with a unique take on technology all without compromising the Subaru niche of all-wheel drive, safety and utility. The new global platform will allow all their current vehicles and the new 2018 Subaru Ascend 3-row SUV to be fitted with hybrid powertrains, plug-in hybrids, electric units, and other types of alternative power units. Things are changing at Subaru. Stay tuned, fancy a Persian rug? Well, here's some advice, if you want the finest, most ornate and color-rich example, you need one woven by the Kashka, which, just in case it has slipped your mind, are those nomadic tribes from Iran. And, until a year or so ago, we considered the Nissan Qashqai the finest small SUV you could buy, indeed, it won our coveted Car of the Year award back in 2014, until the Cita Tikai came along and poked it off its perch. So, Nissan has given its soft rotor king a bit of a refresh in the hope of reclaiming the spoils. The general theme is evolution rather than revolution. The intention was to retain the Qashqai's many virtues but add a more premium tang with styling tweaks outside and a new steering wheel, pleasure materials and reprofiled seats on the inside. Nissan says it's also added extra sound insulation and fettled the suspension to improve the driving experience. And with the big push towards autonomous driving, the cash car will get, from spring 2018, adaptive cruise control that will steer as well as brake and accelerate for you, while an automatic emergency braking system will keep an eye out for pedestrians as well as cars. At the top of the range, there's also a new trim. It's called Techna Plus and is the one we're focusing on here, along with the pokiest engine in the range, the 161 bhp 1.6 liter turbocharged petrol. Those looking for an alternative to diesel will find this 1.6 petrol a worthy option. Okay, it hasn't got an awful lot of guts in the lower reaches of the red range, but keep it above 2000 RPMs and it pulls merrily and gets stronger all the way to the red line. It feels pretty nippy too. Although, despite being marginally behind on power, 
Anatika 1.4 TSI 150 feels at least as quick, if not quicker. Work the engine hard and it makes its presence felt inside, but you can tar its rivals with the same brush. Besides, it's not an unpleasant noise and, when settled at a motorway cruise, the engine fades into the background. You'll be aware of a bit of wind and road noise at this point, but neither proves worrying even on a long journey, so the cash car remains one of the best insulated cars in the class. The six-speed gearbox has a light change, but that's tarnished by a long throw and woolly gait. And couple the clutch pedal's slightly vague biting point with the engine's lack of low end vigor and this range topping cash car isn't the easiest of cars to drive smoothly in stop-start traffic nor is it the most fun around corners. No, for driving pleasure in this class, you need to be sat behind the wheel of an Atika or, even better, an Audi Q2, both of which turn into bends more incisively and corner flatter. That said, the cash gauze steering is accurate, weights up consistently and stays light and easy to twiddle in town. Where the cash car beats its sportier rivals is comfort. It has always demonstrated a level of compliance that others struggle to match and, even on our test cars glitzy part machine polished, hard black 19 in wheels, it irons out ripples and ridges better than an Atika would. Only a particularly vicious pothole upsets its composure. This being the new top spec Tecna Plus, it's really rather nice. The first thing that strikes you are the seats which are trimmed luxuriously in soft napa leather with 3D quilted stitching. Not only do they look good, they feel good too. The cushions offer great all-round support and, being fully electrically adjustable, including 4-way lumbar adjustment, you can tweak them endlessly to find the perfect position. When you're done, the standard memory settings mean you can recall it any time at the touch of a button. Despite some improvements, the 7.0 in infotainment system is largely unchanged, but the new Bose sound system that's standard on this trim sounds punchy enough to please all but the most discerning audiophiles. The 1.6 petrol is available only with the top two trims and, while it is well equipped, Tecna Plus costs a hefty £29,250. To put that into context, a Cita Tika 1.4 TSI 115 top gelance trim costs £4,000 less and an Audi Q2 1.4 TFSI 115 S line trim is £2,000 less. To rub salt into the wounds, the Volkswagen Audi 1.4 is a more efficient engine, so if you want petrol power in the cash car, we'd suggest the 1.2 Dig T coupled with a more sensibly priced N connector trim. True. The 1.2 is quite a bit slower, but should still be suitable for most people's needs. In short, then, the Atika remains the best package in the small SUV segment. But choose the right version and the cash car is still a fine alternative, especially if you value ride comfort over fun handling. Kevin Smith, 49, hopes to take his wife on a drive to the major Spanish city in their newly converted Nissan ENV 200 electric van. Smith transformed the People Mover into a four-berth camper van, complete with an extendable solar panel roof. Inside the van, is a double bed, drop-down flat-screen TV, toilet, cooker, fridge, storage units and even a thermostat. The extendable roof also allows for additional sleeping space if it is required. Powered entirely by solar and electric charge, the motor costs an impressive 0.02p per mile to run. At such a cheap rate, the couple predicts their round trip to Barcelona will cost them less than £50, some £250 cheaper than the cost of the same journey in a petrol car. Smith also owns an electric Nissan Leaf for everyday driving. With two electric cars and a house to power, you'd be forgiven for thinking Smith's power bill would be through the roof. But surprisingly, he pays just £650 annually for both gas and electric, including charging both his vehicles. Smith has managed to supplement his power costs by adding large solar panels to the roof of his home as part of a 2.6 kW solar power system. 
Motorhomes and camper vans are growing in popularity as UK housing prices continue to rise.